uh, we have a casual chat with our guest panel. It's a mix of small companies. Uh, small companies, I mean like 10 or lesser people in, each uh, in the whole company. All the way to uh, people that can hire hundreds of people. Uh, as you know, Gojek, right? Uh, so uh, without further ado, let me invite uh, our guest panel, uh, Gabriel. Gabriel is a uh, founder of Sales Whale. Uh, it's, it's they, he actually is one of the very few lucky people that uh, graduated from Y Combinator. Uh, if you have not heard of Y Combinator, uh, have you heard of Airbnb? Yeah, so Airbnb is one of the, the, the graduating startup from uh, Y Combinator, right? And also AJ, <laughs> you, want, or you want to finish eating first? <laughs> so sorry, I put you on the spot. AJ is the CTO of uh, Gojek, right? If you, have you heard of Gojek? Maybe, maybe yes, yeah. Uh, and also we have Alvin, which is uh, which is the head of product from Bobot.ai. Uh, Bobot.ai is a chatbot, right? And also we have a senior software engineer uh, from a secret company. Right? It's Alisa, <laughs> right? Our only female uh, engineer in, in our panel today. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna pass the mic uh, to you guys. And uh, if you can do a little self-introduction of yourself and also uh, give one, uh, one thing that you do outside work. Yeah, or you don't, or you don't do anything outside work. <laughs> uh, yeah, hi, I'm Gabriel. Um, so uh, as um, Sandy um, introduced, I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Salesville. So um, Salesville is basically an AI sales assistant that helps to uh, qualify uh, leads you know, for companies. So some of the customers that we are working with include uh, Wantedly, right, uh, Renstat Group, uh, General Assembly, and uh, you know, uh, other mid-market and enterprise companies. So uh, right now, our engineering team is uh, seven people. So a pretty small engineering team, I mean, compared to uh, <laughs> Gojek. So, so it's going to be an interesting uh, perspective. Uh, one thing that I do outside of work, other than work, um, I like to uh, play the piano. So yeah, that's a quick introduction of myself. Okay, uh, my name is Ajay. Uh, I work for Gojek. Um, uh, we are not very big company, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and we don't have many many people. Uh, we have we have only around 180 people, not a lot. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll put the perspective. We have 18 products. So if you look at 18 products and 180 people, we have like less than 10 people per product. Very small team. Uh, and, and actually, it is true. Our payments platform is written by like 12, 12 people, uh, which is like a pretty and like average payment platforms are written by like 200 people. So yeah, so that way. Um, I'm from India. Uh, I lived almost all my life in India. Um, I have been traveling for Gojek for the last two and a half years. And this year I decided to stay in Singapore so I can go to Jakarta and Bangalore every other week. That's what I do. Uh, we have office in Singapore now, so which is great. So I spend my Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturday, Sunday over here. Uh, one thing which I do outside my work is mostly I listen to a lot of songs uh, <laughs> because <laughs> that's one thing which is good. Like so, whenever I get into home, I listen to songs. I don't, I don't, I'm not very extra talented, so I don't do anything else apart from that. Um, sometimes when I get time, I try to play Age of Empires, or sometimes as I get time, I try to draw something. So that's what it is. Um, the reason is that I'm actually not a computer science graduate. Uh, I have a diploma in fine arts and I am a commerce graduate, so very different guy in that sense. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Alvin from uh, BotBot. So BotBot is actually a product, it's uh, part of a company called 2359 Media. So um, for us, we are not, we are only half your size. <laughs> <laughs> we are only half your size, we are, we are not that big. So, um, okay, so in, in, in any case, uh, basically our product, it works, um, it's a chatbot to improve the productivity of enterprises. Uh, basically, we do it in the space of automation for enterprises where um, we integrate with systems and get work done for them through the chatbot. So talk to a bot and the bot will do something for you. Um, in terms of what, I'm act what I do on my own free time, uh, I'm a nerd through and through. So uh, <laughs> I play with, I, I build stuff, so I, I, I use Arduino to make some fun projects from time to time. Yep, that's about it. Alyssa? Hi everyone, um, my name is Alyssa. I work for Apple in Singapore. 
I'm part of the CDN team, or Content Delivery Network. Um, for those that don't know what that is, it basically serves things like software updates, uh, applications, music, videos, and different types of content to your devices. Um, outside of work, I'm trying to grow kale and bell pepper in a hydroponic system, and I also enjoy watching MOOCs and online lectures. Okay. Uh, Alvin, Alvin, do you code from time to time or do you now take care more of the product? Because I know for a fact, I heard AJ spoke before, he codes 20% of the time. I know Gabriel, I know he, he doesn't really code anymore. <laughs> yeah, do you still code or is Alisa the only one that codes here? Um, only when necessary. Only when necessary. How do you define <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when, we, when we are short of people. <laughs> Which is all the time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Um, maybe the first question, right? So, um, what a misconception of being a, a, a tech geek, like Alvin said. Uh, that's what does the outside world think of you, and then they they ask you sort of weird questions. Is that, do you guys any have received any weird questions like uh, the the button on my Apple phone don't work? <laughs> Can you help me out right now? Anybody says that to you? I get a lot of weird questions from Apple, but. I can't answer any of them, so please don't ask me anything Apple related. Okay, uh, but for, for any of you guys, anybody tell you like, uh, what a misconception uh, of being a techie do you, do you guys face? I have one. Um, when I first started, well, after graduating, I always thought you needed to know everything before getting a tech job. Um, I'm here to say you don't need to know everything, you'll learn most of the stuff on the job, so don't worry. Uh, secondly, if you think being a techie is a 9 to 5 job, you're totally wrong. I work remote all the time and I completely encourage it and think that you should work outside of the office. Uh, don't join the peak hours, be part of the solution, don't be part of the problem. I think uh, on my side, one of the uh, major misconceptions, I guess, is uh, people think of tech people as just like code monkeys. So basically, like, oh, I hire a bunch of tech people, get them to write code, you know, uh, you know they'll build my idea, they build whatever I want to build. But if you look at the market nowadays, like most good developers, actually, they do have ideas on their own. They would want to get involved in like, you know, product, they want to get involved in the business. So like, um, I know this general conception that techies are just like code monkeys, I think is uh, increasingly getting more and more obsolete because when you get good people, um, you know, they would definitely want to have a voice in uh, you know, the way not just you build your product, but also like your go to market, your, you know, the, the entire business uh, you know, value proposition. So I guess that's uh, one of the, mis the misconceptions on my side. And then on that point, because uh, we, we, we have a few uh, engineers in the, in the crowd, I spoke a few of them uh, before. Uh, the ecosystem is always changing, right? It's always very fast moving. Uh, new languages are coming out. So what advice do you guys, uh, what can you guys give them to stay uh, relevant? <laughs> I, I really can't give advice. I don't think so. I'm like qualified to give any advice to a lot of people. It's their life. But um, one thing which I have done myself is that I can tell you. Um, I have learned and I have learned and learned all my life. And I think uh, whatever profession you are in, you have to learn to excel. And things will change. Um, uh, like IT or tech industry changes every maybe six months now compared to 18 months earlier. Um, the technology and the thought process changes every 12 months. And the stack gets older in every 18 months. So whatever you wrote today is useless in 18 months, at least. Um, especially in the startup industry, not in the legacy or Hard, uh, like hardcore like uh, hardware industry does not. But the thing is, the tech startup industry changes things a lot. Uh, there is a lot of good software being commoditized. Uh, for example, TensorFlow and all stuff. If you have to do ML models like six months back or 12 months back, you have to get the whole Hadoop cluster on your own and a lot of other stuff which will take like six months to get up and running and then write to your own models. Now you can do it three clicks maybe and four days of work and you'll have very nice regression tool running at a very fast speed, right? But now, if you, the one advice which I give you, or should tell you, is never fear the sunk cost. So one of the biggest problem is sunk cost fallacy. People do not want to delete or leave their code. Um, please delete and leave your code and <laughs> rewrite it. Because if you don't do it, then you will never move to TensorFlow. 
you will never move to new software and you will always get stuck with your own old software and that's wrong and you will be outdated software will be outdated soon so please uh, leave the sun cost fallacy that is the only one advice i have um, you want the mic So sunk cost is um, sunk S U N K. Yeah. So when you write a soft, when you write a software, and um, so suppose you are playing a video game, and uh, you'll die in video game. The next time you play, you'll play better, right? So if you play ten times, you play much much better. So if a software which you code which you write, uh, if you write a code and you delete that code, straight delete it. Next code which you'll write will be much much better. I can tell you that. And that's one of the biggest fear people have. They always say, comment this code, but don't delete it. My point is just delete the code and see what happens. It will be better next time. Yeah. Elwin, it seems like you have something to add. Oh, uh, I agree experience. with what you say because I usually restart all my projects. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't reuse anything at all. So um, actually, from, from I think personal experience, uh, you don't really just focus on learning uh, code or code related stuff or tech related stuff all the time. Um, it would be good to have uh, exposure to many, many things because end of the end of the day, um, like say for example, sometimes I, uh, sometimes I would pick up learning stuff like, uh, oh, I see my junior over there. Okay. So um, <clears throat> sometimes I'll pick up learning stuff like uh, related to music, for example, or sometimes pick up stuff related to art, which uh, somehow it seems to help me for any of my weird TensorFlow projects. So um, yeah, it, it also helps when, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if any of you are actually in consulting. So for us, when we also do consulting jobs, we work with um, a whole ton of industries with uh, different domain knowledge. So when you do happen to read up uh, certain uh, dom uh, in, in a different domain or a different space that uh, you are actually in right now. It helps when you talk to people because uh, when you talk to people from another industry, um, you, you might not be able to catch or understand what they're asking about or what they actually say. So if you do happen to read that up, then you can understand better and then bring your programming knowledge into play to uh, suggest to a customer, for example, what they should be doing um, I mean, that's from a consultancy standpoint. Yep. Uh, Alyssa, do you, do you stay current? Do you learn new codes? I'm not trying to put you on the spot here. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I try to watch one video per day that's related to something in tech. It could be just like a past tech conference video or somebody wrote a blog post about improving your network performance or whatever. Um, and I find that that helps. Okay. Um, and the next question probably is I'm asking on behalf of you know, some people that are trying to grow your company. Um, and also for, for, for you, right? So you're also hiring aggressively right now. Uh, as your engineering team grow, right? How do you manage your team in a very efficient manner? Yeah. Anybody want to start off? Elvin, you grew, how, how fast have you guys grown over the, 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 the year? Uh, it seems to be the target of all questions. <laughs> uh, okay, so I mean for us, um, we, we are still relatively young as a startup. So um, there, there are processes in place where we put to uh, at, at least not to offload our guys uh, from uh, random stuff. But uh, as a startup, um, our processes are more flexible in a way where... Uh, okay, so it's more like uh, we keep ourselves like 80% occupied, 20% free, so that we can uh, have like 20% to do random stuff. So, so uh, some of my guys at the back, basically, they can tell you more, right? So uh, to, to, prevent, to prevent people from burning out, um, our, our general tech, relate, uh, our tech process basically is that once you have already done 80% of your job, uh, to, uh, eight, uh, sorry, 80% of your time has been spent on doing a particular job. 20% uh, you can do it on, uh, put it on uh, unrelated stuff, could be studying like ML or studying something you're interested in. So um, at least that prevents burnout from our side. Um, that at least is uh, how we manage our guys 
from a tech perspective. Um, from overall comp company perspective, basically um, the easiest one that I can describe right now is uh, daily we would actually have a uh, stand-up call to um, to talk about what everybody is doing. So everyone has an overview, an idea that of uh, what everyone else is doing. At the end, at the end of the day, we'll have like a closing to describe what you have already accomplished or what uh, has already been done so that uh, everyone else also knows the status of what's going on. So uh, this helps to, I mean, um, by me saying it to you right now, you probably not uh, feel there's any impact that it would help you in any sense, but as the person or as the people who are actually talking through day in, day out, um, they would actually have a better idea or a sense of what the entire company is, uh, uh, what's going on in the company. It also helps them to build confidence in the company. Also. So I think that is actually very important for us. Also very interested in hearing uh, Ajay, right? Okay, so... Uh, Growing team means uh, you're organically growing it, right? It's like a lot of plants and every plant takes its own root and becomes a bigger plant, right? Becomes a tree. So what we do is two things, right? First, um, we try not to hire leaders from outside. We try to grow people from inside, give them a chance first. And uh, if they do not, uh, like, do not come to up to the job, then we try to hire. So first, that kind of kills the disappointment within the company, like why did you hire somebody from outside, why you didn't give me a chance, right? So we give them a chance, if they don't do it, then we hire people and they, then they are more ready to accept and learn people, right? First thing is that. Second, um, I don't know whether I should say it or not, we don't hire assholes, so no assholes. So uh, we try to fire people as soon as there is a politics spotted, so no politics. Uh, so that's, these are the things which actually kind of let us very slow growth. Um, while we grew a lot, we grew from 38 people to 200 now in three countries. Uh, but um, we kind of uh, go like one in 800 or one in 900. Um, that is crazy ratio we have. Uh, and it requires a lot of things, right? Um, for example, when you are growing, uh, we look at more like a person as a family. Uh, I ask or and anybody in the panel can say no to hire a person, first thing is that. So you have to source the people right, then only you can, you can grow them right. So once you have people and they are ready to learn and they don't fear the titles. So a lot of people actually, I should talk about this, it's very interesting, sorry I'm digressing a little bit, but I want to talk about this. A um, lot of people actually really worried about when they join a company, what is their title? lot of people, right? Um, we do not have title. We try not to have title within company. We don't play title in the company. Um, and whenever somebody actually really get stuck on the title, I ask them, look, when you want a title, you want to quit. At that point of time, you really need a title. When you're joining a company, you don't need a title. See, when you want to quit, you want to say that I was a VP at Gojek, right? When you're joining, you don't need to be a VP at Gojek, <laughs> correct? So I tell them, like, if you're okay, to come in without title and learn something with us, then please come and, hi come and join us. And that has happened a lot. And this is good. And sometimes it's very different. It's a very different mindset to get people with no titles. Uh, sometimes very difficult to, and those are the things we do only to test, test the attitude. We only do to test, figure out like what they think about themselves. Are they there to learn or are they there to earn? And there are two different things. Earning a title is much better than earning money. And learning a skill is much better than learning the politics. So we try to figure out what is the balance, what they are de doing. And if that is the case, then mostly internal people growth is one of the best things you can do, always do. And that's what we have been able to do. And that means we have people who are like 27, 28 years old, who are actually leading the entire allocation or transport platform for us, yeah. uh, who are leading the entire payments platform for us, and which is I'm very proud of. Yeah. So we have hired a lot of good leaders, but average age has been very young. And whenever we hire somebody, we really hire somebody to bring them in and it's their responsibility to grow the team. We never hire people on existing team, on a leadership position. And uh, the hiring process is that people own their hiring process. It's completely decentralized. You want to hire somebody in your team, go ahead, figure it out and do it. It is slow because not everybody is like that disciplined. But, but when they say we are moving slow, we say it's your fault. So, yeah.
Okay. Make people responsible. That's what I will say. Interesting. And uh, and f- no life lessons from uh, been hiring people the past six months. Uh, yeah. Can you share a little bit like uh, how like the lessons from you uh, hiring more and more people? When I first met you, you were, you were like four person team, right? Yeah. Right now, you guys 14. are fourteen. Yeah. yeah. So hiring people. I think engineers or. Um, just in, in the team as in, g- in general. Um, yeah. So for us, it's very different because we are very small. Right now, we are 14 people. Half the team are engineers. So uh, what we look out for in uh, engineers are people who can uh, operate independently, people who uh, actually have a passion for like the product and the business problem that we are solving. Um, and basically, we look for people who have a uh, track record of like shipping um, stuff. So for us, our hiring bar is actually very high. So you know, uh, most of our engineers used to be from like Vicky, uh, you know, the video streaming company that was uh, acquired. Don't, don't tell everybody ago. where you push yeah. people from. <laughs> <laughs> and like you know, um, Nitrous uh, .io engineers, they, they have they have joined us. So um, so I, I guess when you keep the hiring bar high, you know, um, smart people tend to attract smart people. They refer you know to uh, this so called gig to their friends, and yeah. So that's how we have been uh, doing hiring. Yeah. Okay. And how different is your product now than when you first started? Uh, very different. <laughs> can, can you um, talk about like, how is it different? And then, uh, yeah, what is the most proud, your proudest moment? Proudest moment. Or you want to pass it I on? I pass it on. <laughs> <laughs> how it's different. Okay, when, when I started. Yeah. Um, okay, I started uh, around, um, as a CTO, I started last year, March. I was working with Gojek for like before six months before that as well. Um, when we started, we were doing around 10,000 bookings per day. Um, we do more than 2 million per day now. So we grew a lot. Um, we do around 150 million API calls per second. Uh, and we have 18 products now compared to four when we started. So if you look at, look at us now, we are market leaders in Indonesia for 18 verticals. Uh, most likely, we are the largest food company, food delivery company in the world, uh, except China, outside China. Um, we kind of deliver like 30,000 tons of food every month to people. <laughs> and, uh, and we do around like maybe 50 round trips to moon on our drivers. So we are very big now, like in terms of product. In terms of engineering, we did not grow that much. While product grew around like 1,000x, engineering kind of grew only like 5x. So um, we, are, we have to be very, and we can't, fa- we can't really hire people that fast, right? Uh, one of the things which changed for us is um, the communication. Biggest problem actually became more and more the, the product grew and more and more the team decentralized. More and more communication problems started coming in. And we, are proactively solving those problems. Uh, so basically, uh, how many of tools you can put it, uh, they will not solve the problems. You can have Slack, you can have chat, your WhatsApp, Telegram, or whatever you have. You can provide people with everything. If people are not willing to communicate, you can't do anything about it. So instead of looking at the tools to solve the problem, you should look at the people, habit, and behaviors to solve the problem. That is one of the things we change in Gojek, and we are still trying to learn to fix that. So yeah, and I think uh, it will always be fixing mode. It will never be that, oh, we achieved this. So that is one thing. Um, the proud moment for me was when we first time did 1 million orders per day. Um, it was really proud because uh, we were a very small team. And um, we were doing a concurrent of like 70,000 at that point of time. Uh, what, I, what I mean by concurrent of 70,000 is like 70,000 people are back on motorcycle and roaming around in Jakarta. Uh, and our app was supporting that. And we are doing live updates and all this stuff. Just to give you a little bit of context, we receive around 9 billion events from drivers every day. Uh, and we relate to every customer and everything else. This is the largest and biggest for any other company to do that because we have a lot of motorcycles. So for any one geography, even Grab and Uber doesn't do the scale we do, mm-hmm. while we are very small. So that way we are pretty good. Uh, so that was pride moment, proud moment that things did not go down. Do you remember how you celebrate? Uh, we had a big, big cake 
and we got drunk <laughs> we got really drunk that night so yeah uh, yeah so okay. and second proud moment was that we could never celebrate fridays uh, because friday is the largest traffic and we always used to go down oh. uh, this was like 2015 june or july uh, but we don't go down anymore now so that is another thing and then uh, alvin okay um I don't focus too much on achievements. Usually, for me, my proudest moment is actually every single day with my team. So the the key thing for us is actually this. Um, I find that morale is actually very important. Being having high morale means high productivity, and uh, of course we are celebrating it as well. So we are having a Christmas dinner. <laughs> Yeah, um, but in, in, in any way, um, wh why I say so? Be because is that um, I feel that uh, being able to um, it, most the team doesn't to to get a very productive team is not about monetary rewards, but rather you as a, you as a person working with each other. Like if you can stand working with each other, or can you be happy working with each other? If you can actually be happy working with each other, naturally you can increase your product. Productivity. You can get more ideas, fresh ideas. Uh, you can definitely do your work faster. That's for sure. And uh, you you achieve better results, of course. So um, that being said, I mean my story is quite simple. Alisa, <laughs> right. uh, what's your proudest moment? Proudest moment. Um, I guess when we had our data pipeline built out, I was pretty proud. That was pretty nice. It took us a long time to do it. Uh, we have a small team in Singapore. There's only six of us here. Um, and three of us deal mostly with the entire data pipeline. So it was a pretty proud moment when we got that running. Yeah. And uh, this question is probably more for the, the, the geeks in the, <laughs> in the audience. Uh, can you guys share what's your current job scope like and uh, what kind of technical stack are you guys using right now? So the, the job scope that you are doing right now, if, if you can share, uh, and also what kind of technical stacks are you guys using? Okay. Um, so the engineers in my team don't really have a scope. Everyone's kind of free to go wherever they want within the CDN stack. And that's anything from setting it up all the way to processing it, to fixing it, to managing it, configuring it. Uh, but specifically, I mostly just deal with the data side. And so that's the infrastructure that's collecting it, analyzing it, processing it, visualizing it, and then improving the network. Uh, so what was the second part? Oh, tech stack. Yeah, so okay. tech stack. Um, so the main languages that I use are Golang uh, for concurrency and easier deployment, distribution to all our machines, uh, Python for a lot of our analytics, machine learning, and processing stuff. Uh, JavaScript for front end and bash scripts every now and then. Uh, oh, and Scala because we have to in Spark. Uh, in terms of tools and things, uh, our pipeline has a bunch of like Apache Kafka that we use to as a message, message queue to have high throughput logs. Um, for storage, there's a mix of InfluxDB, Elasticsearch, Cassandra, ClickHouse, and we like to experiment a lot and that's why they exist they may not be in production but we just like to have it running and see how many billions of rows it can process uh, and or, as i've mentioned i also use apache spark for uh, processing streaming data um, for deployment we have docker running on kubernetes and for the data science side we use scipy numpy um, and some internal machine learning libraries that's it. I, I, I didn't get any of that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but Alvin? Um, I say we are not that far off. Well, almost everything's the same. But uh, anyway, um, OK, so uh, first question is? Your, your current job scope. My current job scope. So uh, everything and anything under the sun uh, goes from fundraising to uh, looking at finances to planning ahead for the next couple of years to technology to protect product management. I uh, haven't really coded much, but yeah, probably we'll need to code in the next couple of days. Uh, yeah, basically anything goes, um, I think it's pretty much the same for the rest of my team. Um, everyone's flexible to be involved in any, any part of the business. Um, mainly because I feel that uh, we, 
I, we don't need everybody to special. We, we don't want every our team to specialize in like just one thing alone. We want exposure to everybody else. It helps uh, the person to grow as well because um, going forward, if any of your developers, for example, want to uh, get promoted or maybe go to the next job, you will need more skill sets than just coding, for example. So I feel that uh, we, we are trying to grow people here. So that, that's why uh, we are not limited to one scope of work. Um, as, for, as for tech stack, uh, almost the same. So uh, there's nothing much for me to add. <laughs> yeah, that, that's about it. But uh, uh, what I would say is um, always try to keep the architecture very, very simple for anything that you develop because maintenance is a big, 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 big problem. Extremely huge problem. A very, very simple example. Say if you had developed uh, an application for your client two years ago and you had, uh, and then suddenly there's a problem, a, a problem comes about and you have to fix it like almost in immediately. Um, if you had a very complicated stack then and there's nobody with the knowledge or you have actually forgotten what you have done two years back, then uh, it's really, really hard to fix. It will probably take a whole bunch of time. So uh, it will be much easier for you to use like what, uh, what Amazon or uh, Azure is actually giving you. So to reduce the complexity of your scope, let the infrastructure team on, on Azure and Amazon handle that for you so that you can focus on what you need to do, which is deliver a good product to your end customers. That's all. Okay. And Gabriel, Gabriel first. <laughs> I see Ajay is giving thought, like, like you think for. <laughs> so, current scope. Yeah. So, um, we turned the clock back one year ago. I was mostly doing coding. So, I was just building the product, talking to customers. We turned the clock back. Okay, so after that, um, we went to uh, Y Combinator. We came back. We raised $1.2 million. And then, I guess, um, the, the proudest moment for my team was when they managed to get me to stop coding. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, so uh, my current job scope now is mostly doing sales, customer success, product, and, uh, you know, um, basically er everything and anything else, including like buying lunch, cleaning the toilet. So, yeah, so that's my job scope now. Um, uh, tech stack, so uh, mostly uh, Ruby, um, React.js, uh, on Amazon, we use Docker, um, machine learning on uh, Python. We are using this interesting natural language uh, processing library called uh, Spacey.io. So for those of you interested, you can check it out. Um, yeah, um, I, I, that's about it. Okay, AJ. Uh, what are he said? So <laughs> my, 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 my current job is like, I, my job is job scope is to happiness of people. That's what my job scope is. Uh, and chief janitor. <laughs> so that's what I do. Um, uh, I always, so when I, when I write code, I actually go and delete code. That's what my job is. So to make chaos. Uh, yeah, I do, I do that. Um, so, so one of the things which we do also is we write a lot of TDD, uh, test driven code, a lot of it. Um, and the reason is that Mostly few of our microservices are not touched after six months or eight months. So either we have to rewrite them or if you have to fix something small them, the only only ad, only cover of protection we have is if we have written tests for it. If you have written tests for it, then if you write do something wrong, tests will fail, you'll know what is going on. So that will save you. Uh, that is my, um, that's what the two things I have. Uh, in terms of tech stack, uh, we do almost whatever they said, except we also do Go, go and Clojure mm -hmm. uh, heavily. Um, most of the tech stack, all the APIs on Ruby and Rails, uh, only fronting APIs. Uh, what we do is backend, or mostly backend is moving to gRPC. Our entire payments is on gRPC, so we don't use HTTP anymore. Uh, so everything is gRPC, everything is synchronous. Um, a uh, lot of workers and a uh, lot of Kafka, a lot of Kafka, um, pretty large Kafka actually <laughs> in that sense. <laughs> every, every, every microservice emits a log in Kafka and event in Kafka. So almost everything is synchronous. Uh, so Go, Clojure, Ruby, Java. Uh, more Java is retiring, Go is in, in place. Clojure is mostly for our functional programming stuff. Ruby is mostly for APIs. Um, GRPC, and HTT, GRPC and HTTP, uh, GRPC is mostly for all our backends. Uh, HTTP for front end, uh, whatever it is required. And that's it. Uh, not very complex. Okay. Stack stack, very right. simple. Uh, I've got one last question, and then uh, everybody, anybody can ask uh, questions, right? Uh, so 
what's the best piece of advice you receive? And also the worst advice. So it's two two part <laughs> question. <laughs> Alisa. <laughs> Uh, I'll start with the best advice. Um, I find that if you compare yourself to others, other achieve uh, people, other people's achievements, um, it can be very tiring and depressing. So instead, just try competing with the you from yesterday, and I find that to be much better improvement than trying to compare yourself to other people. Uh, I don't know. Worst advice? Maybe follow your passion is not a good advice. I don't know. Um, my best advice was don't look back. So I, I really practice that. Like when I was mentioning, I, I don't, uh, I don't reuse my code. I rebuild something. <laughs> so basically, yeah, just don't look back because uh, every day is a new day. You are just playing catching up. So um, if you, the further you look back, the more overloaded you feel. So don't don't look back. Um, just look forward to every day. Then uh, the worst advice that I got was uh, probably the opposite when uh, well, in my previous job, basically my CTO asked, always asked me to look back like six months ago, what do you suggest? Or one year ago, what do you talk about? Then, um, which uh, I felt that was very bad advice because it's like so far back and you probably not remember exactly what's going on. <laughs> The advice I received was very, I still remember that. Uh, it doesn't matter what has been said. It matters who said it. Um, it's daily in your life. If 10 people tell you that you're an idiot, but the people who matter to you tell you you're an idiot, that matters. So don't listen to people. First thing is that. Uh, second, so that is the advice I received. I always follow that. And I want to tell you two, th two, two sentences. Um, first sentence is, today is, the, today is the tomorrow which you are worrying about yesterday. Think about it. Today is the tomorrow which you were worrying about yesterday. Uh, and second, second piece of uh, thing which I always tell people, um, in, 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 in when you are in work, when you want to do things, um, there is only one reason to do something, and there are thousand reasons not to do it. It's your choice which one you want to choose. So the best piece of advice I got was uh, to talk to your users, talk to your customers, do not uh, build things in a vacuum. Uh, the worst piece of advice I got was uh, when I was sharing sales with uh, um, an advisor slash investor, he said, oh, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. Like no company in their right mind will use something like this. So I hope that you guys are working on something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, anybody has any questions? We open up the floor to questions. We do. We always have. We do. Uh, <laughs> just now you were saying like you always hire the best people and ask them to. Okay. Juniors can be the best people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Juniors are the best people actually. Relative for their experience and relative for their skill level, it's all relative, right? Yeah. yeah. No, no. Uh, yeah. So, so, so freshers out of college are the best people. Mm. They are the raw molds. You can put them in any mold and make them anything. Uh, actually, when you hire a literal person, he has to unlearn and learn, relearn things according to you. Juniors are the best ones. Just hire them as many as you can, and you'll result. You'll see the result in two years. That's what Gojek is all about, actually, today. Yeah. Uh, I just want to add that uh, Apple Singapore has an intern and grad program. So if there are any <laughs> starter software engineers, uh, come speak to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll give chance to everybody. Relax. <laughs> okay. You you have a question. Uh, I mean, like the the fresh graduate must like be brave to stand out from the crowd, right? So you have like side projects. You have, you know you contribute to open source. I think that's the easiest way to stand out. Yeah, I mean that's my two cents. And also, I think a lot of companies look for aptitude, right? So I I, I think Gabriel shared me before. I he he met somebody that uh, was. A s uh, he met him for half an hour, and you def you want and you knew right away you wanted to, to hire that person, right? Like you always look out for people that do uh, extraordinary stuff, like go backpacking or something. You want to share? Uh, 
uh, yeah, so so we it's a bit unorthodox, but basically we look out for people like what uh, Cindy mentioned, who have like um, very very passionate interests outside of work, and people who kind of like have accomplished. Uh, amazing slash atrocious things before in the past because one of our philosophy is that if you are someone who you know uh, have done like you know um, interesting slash crazy things in the past then it's a pattern that is likely to recur but uh, yeah hey. <laughs> anybody else Maybe I can answer that. Practically everybody on our end, on our side, basically can choose to do remote <coughs> any day, whenever they want. As long as uh, you just let everyone know that uh, where where you are going to be at that day or at the point in time. So uh, I mean, a couple of our team basically sometimes just choose to go downstairs to a cafe and to work with their laptops and that, that's it and some days uh, some guys choose not to come because uh, they're probably sick or uh, just felt that it's, uh, it's tough to actually travel to many places over and over again so then um, they would just prefer to stay at home or stay at uh, maybe a client's office or some place that is more convenient for them so yes remote working definitely works um, it works for us because uh, they um, at the start of the day, we have an opening, and the end of the day, we have a closing. So we know what everyone's doing right now. So there is no qualms to that. Yeah. Uh, Alice, you get some. Yeah. Uh, I, I probably mentioned in the beginning, but yeah, I love remote working, and I think everyone should remote work, especially if you're a software engineer. Uh, it helps in my team because we're distributed. We have teams in other parts of the world, so we have to communicate <coughs> asynchronously whether that's email, whether that's Slack, HipChat, um, whether that's just doing pushes to GitHub, um, you just need some way to communicate your progress um, and try to not to have too many large group meetings because they suck <laughs> and they're synchronous. Um, actually, we, we, as soon as you open second office, you are remote, right? Uh, that doesn't matter whether you are working from second office or working from home. Uh, so we, we, we allow 100% remote when you, whenever you want to. Uh, we have core working hours. So you have, you have to, and different teams have different core working hours because there are different time zones. So we mandate only three core working hours so that you can communicate with team. If you're getting blocked, you can solve the problems. And team knows that you'll be online at that point of time. Apart from that, we don't care. Uh, I think it is working out very well. Uh, it's mostly putting the responsibility of individuals rather than monitoring them. Uh, as soon as you try to monitor somebody, he'll figure out loopholes. So we try not to do that. Um, you put a proxy server in your office, you'll figure out how to bypass that. So that's the same process. The, we, we try the, any process in company which actually monitors employees in some way or tries to do something, it's a proxy server. Always remember that. And people can always bypass proxy servers. So let's not go that path. But yeah, we support remote 100% all the time. Um, I am remote a lot of time because I'm traveling a lot. Uh, and I still work, I still try to attend the calls. And I do not go to calls which are more than five people, so. So I think it's very interesting. So um, I think we are the only company that do not believe in remote working. So over here, we have a zero remote working policy, even though like out of our seven engineers, only one is Singaporean, which means that we literally fly and relocate people to Singapore just to work uh, in our office. And uh, I think it's interesting because the, the reason for us is because we are small, fast growing startup. So. Um, the reason why we don't practice remote working is because I feel that it inhibits like this type of serendipitous kind of interaction. Like you wouldn't believe the kind of magic that happens when you have two smart people, you know, just having lunch together or like just chatting in the hallway in front of a whiteboard and the kind of magic that just happens. So, and personally, I've done remote myself as well. I kind of find it a bit isolating. So, I mean, that, that is part of the side effects of remote working. Yeah. So, so it's not like that you can work the whole year remote from in Gojek. 
It's not. Yeah. So uh, it's not like you can work the entire month remote. No, you cannot. Uh, what we support is that I want to make sure that we, we actually want that balance as well. So we said, yeah, you can go work remote whenever you want. You don't need permission, but you need to be in office few few days a month. You have to be. So and sometimes it requires up to, up to teams because we, we do pairing as well. So for for some some things pay, we do pair programming. A lot of times then remote doesn't work at all, or they have to use a screen hero or something like that. So yeah, so it depends. But the thing is, it's. It's not remote. Actually, the remote is not the question. The question is flexibility of the working type and for such flexibility of working location. As long as your employer or we support that, it's good for people. Mm. I think that is what the crux of it is. Yeah. We got two more questions, and then uh, yeah, we have our lucky draw. Any video on? Once the mic. Okay. Uh, so if not, uh, we thank uh, the the panel. Uh, a round of applause, please, guys. 